So Mike Todd has been caught stealing someone and surprisingly so it's not the first time. Now I'm not talking about a preacher drawing inspiration from another preacher like in the case of I don't know Benny Hinn and Catherine Coleman where you can see certain patterns in how they preach. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about plain plagiarism like bar for bar, word for word. And for those who might not know why this is a problem, first of all preaching is hard work like a lot of work especially in the preparation part and secondly different preachers have different callings and different facets of the same message that's why peter could not do what paul did and vice versa despite them preaching the same gospel and lastly because preaching is not only a direct reflection of what you know scholarly wise it's also an indicator of how well you spend your time with god and are able to draw messages from him or rather listen from him and what he has to say both to you and to his people as the appointed shepherd of the flock and that's kind of why prophets in the olden days were better messengers and preachers to people than the Pharisees. So if you're more invested in studying people rather than the word of God, so much so that you plagiarize word for word what they preach, that should be a red flag as you're about to see. And so with that, let's take a look and see if this is the case. Watch this. Not to actually study. Oh wait, um, this video is by All Things Theology or um, uh, Chris Kedob. You can find the full video in the link in the description below. Let's continue. Bible. So let's get into our first clip. Um, let me give you one more illustration. Um, Jason and Steve and Todd, will, will you guys stand up? Hey, uh, Charles, Will, Scott, come here real quick. Last analogy, we go on. Uh, we'll give you an illustration. Let's say that I saved these three men. I'm, I'm going to go away for a while. And, um, and I've provided for Debbie, but I want to provide some additional funds for her. But I want to channel or funnel those funds through you three men. So I'm going to send all each of you ten thousand dollars a month okay <laughs> jason don't get that excited this is just an illustration uh, okay um let's say i'm going on a trip and um i'm gonna be gone for an extended period of time y'all come right here i'm gonna come I'm gonna be gone for an extended period of time and um i want to provide for natalie my wife and um i'm taking care of her but i want to provide some extra finances just in case she gets in a spot um and I'm going to give each one of y'all $10,000 every, hold on, it's just an example, okay? Just an example. Even the cues and the, and the joke, what? Wow. Scott, calm down. <laughs> so, uh, I'm talking to Debbie Everett and I say it to, to you, but I want you to... Oh, the summon by the way, is about tithing. So, just to get the context, it's about tithing. Yeah. Give Debbie 10% of it, $1,000 a month, and you can keep the 90%. Just give my wife ten percent. So I'm talking to Debbie every day and, and let her know, you know, it's an extended trip, but I'll be back in several months, I have to be gone. And after about three months I, I think about these other funds and I say, Hey, how are the funds coming in from the, the three guys? You know, and uh, she said, Well, uh, Jason sends a thousand dollars a month. Just like you said, as a matter of fact it arrives like January first, February first, I mean he's like clockwork, it's thousand dollars. So good good job. Okay. I'm gonna provide ten thousand dollars extra for her through all of you and all I want you to do is give her a thousand dollars each time I send you the ten thousand dollars. The other nine, you can keep. You can do whatever you want to do with it, but I just want to give you um, that money, okay? And what if I talk to my wife every night, what's up baby? Hey, you know, ooh, I miss you. Cake it. Y'all remember cake it? Okay, cool. So I'm I'm talking to her and I'm like, hey, you mean with those finances that um, I was gonna have Charles and uh, Will and Scott give to you. How's it been going? And she's like, yeah. So um, Charles sends a thousand dollars every first and fifteenth, like clockwork. It's like thousand dollars, thousand dollars. Like it just keeps coming. Wow. Okay, that's it. Um, I said, well, what about Steve? She said, well, Steve is sending two thousand a month. I said, two thousand a month. I didn't ask him for two thousand a month. I just asked him for a thousand. Month. I know. I said, well, why is he sending two? I don't know. He just sends two thousand dollars a month. I said, what about Will? Will, for some reason, since 2000. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I just told him to send a thousand. I know, but every first and 15th, he sends 2000. And it's just been consistent all over. I said, well, what about Traeger? I'm uh, Todd, sorry. Todd. I said, what, what, what about Todd? She said, well, we, we need to talk about Todd. I said, well, why? What's Todd doing? Well, the first month he sent 700. 
The second month, 400. And this last month, he didn't send anything. And I was like, okay, so what about the thief? I mean, what about Scott? He stole. He stole everything we worked for, even the joke. Is he, what, what is he, is he Amy Shum? Okay, that's a terrible example. Even her stolen jokes aren't funny, but, but anyway, you get the point. How do you go this far to steal, as you can hear, as you've already heard, this is word for word. How do you even, do you have no shit? Okay, it gets better. Let's go back and watch. And he said, well, let's, let's talk about Scott for a second. She said the first time he sent 700, the second time he sent five, and this last month he didn't send anything. And I say, what? Scott didn't send nothing this last month? She said, nothing. I said, but I gave him the $10,000. Okay. Now I want you to think about this. Think about this. How do you think that makes me feel? And I'm giving him the 10000 It's coming from me. And I just asked him for 10% for my wife. He can keep the 90%. Okay, what do you, what do you think I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to send him any more money. Because he's proven to me he can't be trusted. And I'm going to take what I'm giving him and I'm going to give it to Steve and Jason. Because they've proven they can be trusted. Who would I... Stop sending resources to me. Not you're, you're not a bad person if you don't tie. You're not a bad person. Watch this. Not because he's a bad person. Yeah, yeah. It's because he didn't do what I asked to right. be done right. with the resources. Okay, listen to me very carefully. Tithing might be more personal to Jesus than what you thought. Could it be said that tithing may be more personal to Jesus? than we think <laughs> he has the power and if you say what? yo yo uh word for word the points everything straight from the next student's notebook no changing of handwriting no changing of words or punctuation marks no replacement of words everything now the problem is let's not even get to whether the illustration about i think is correct uh, or not i think because the story says basically god blesses you and expects you just to give 10 percent to his church his wife right i don't know if that example is relevant because then this illustration excludes you from the church it, it puts puts it as though christians being blessed by wealth and the church are two different entities and that's not true um yeah let's not get deep into that the point is god gives to you and he expects you to give a, a tithe i think we get the more of the story but the fact that he doesn't even credit the source he preaches it as though it's his own that to me so far is what astonishes me and yeah let's keep listening I can't believe you just take it away and give it to the others if you don't think jesus would do that read the parable of the talents when he took from the one that wasn't faithful mm. and gave it to the one who was faithful he wants to provide for you. But why would he provide and bless people who will not even be concerned about his wife? It's a test. And it's very important we pass this test. And if you don't believe that's real, go study the parable of the talents. Even the yeah. references, my goodness. Yeah. Where God literally took from the one who did not do what he asked him to do. Yeah. And he gave it to the ones who were. Now listen. Listen to me. This is an example of me trying to provide for my bride. Yeah. But Jesus calls the church. Um, let me just, just remind you. Is the church the bride of Christ? His bride. Wow, I mean, literally phrase by phrase, example by example, yes. even joke by joke, you can see Mike Todd is very influenced by Robert Morris. And just in case you think this might be something I'm conjuring up, Rob, he definitely knows Robert Morris. Robert Morris actually preached uh, many tithing sermons in Mike Todd's own church, including this one entitled What Test? Three years ago. Mike Todd, in my estimation, has got much of his theology of tithing from Robert Morris. And again, true, this true. isn't to talk about the doctrine of tithing. You guys know my position on the issue. I believe it's primarily an old covenant practice, which the new covenant doesn't command law-based giving, but new, but rather free-based giving. But maybe you're just saying, KWK, that's one sermon, right? Clearly. 
Okay, so do do I agree with what he says about his um, tithing principle? Yeah, I think I do. I think tithing, like many other aspects of the Old Testament, was a law not broken but fulfilled in the New Testament. Yes, tithe is not mentioned in the New Testament, but we see forms of giving that seem to be a better expression than the tithing law that was given to the Israelites. And to me, that's an uh, that's that's a fulfillment of that because I believe so long as there are ministers called to serve God without any other source of income, because there are, as a matter of fact, that's a mandate of many ministers according to the New Testament. Then there lies a responsibility for Christians to give for the sake of the livelihoods of those people and the functionality of the church, and therefore. I do not think thing has been abolished in that we should not tithe, but the ceiling has been broken as to how much you can tithe. It's no longer just 10%, 20 if you like, but the principle of giving to the house of the Lord in essence still stands. But again, as he's saying currently, it's not the only example. It's quite surprising because um, in a very recent podcast that happened, I think two months ago, one of the questions Mike Todd is asked is if he supports prosperity preaching, which of course he says he doesn't. And in his explanation, he says people will take a picture and a short clip and then mix suggestions, uh, make conclusions that aren't fitting or do not portray the whole picture. Do I believe that's fair? No, it's not. That's silly. You, you don't make big assumptions or over superficial evidence. But then the picture that he's talking about is a picture with him and Robert Morris, who in as much as we are not supposed to make conclusions of that picture, um, it seems awkward because now he's stolen a someone, word for word, from him. So I want to defend him, but then it, it's really hard to, given what he's now doing in terms of preaching. Yeah, now let's go on and listen to the second second example and see what it entails. Check this out. And I've got to tell you, I was just going to read it to you and then tell you, but I've got to tell you so you can see it as we read the passage and not think about the old legalistic way that it's presented many times. When I say don't rob God, I don't mean by you keep your tithe and your tithe belongs to him and so you're robbing God of money. I actually don't think that's what this means. I personally don't think that God needs our money. Please know that's a personal revelation from his own personal study, if I may say so. Do you? I don't think he does. Here's what I think he's trying to say in Malachi 3, and this is what I'm saying in this message. And you could even put it after the three words, don't rob God, if you want. Don't rob God of an opportunity to bless you. And and, and, and and a lot of churches, and I, I want to apologize, they really, really do a disservice to this because they misinterpret the heart of God on the tithe. And, and I'm going to expose where it gets misinterpreted, and I want to give Transformation Church, who is the, the key to the rise of a holy rebellion, I'm going to give us the actual right interpretation. Malachi 3, okay? Uh, we've heard this in almost every offering time ever. Will a man rob God? How do you rob God? In tithe? and offering so don't rob god give your time <laughs> and your offering <laughs> that's not the spirit in which i believe god is speaking this scripture in it's it's the fact that he takes it and regurgitates it as his own preaching. That's that is what is pissing me off about all this. He's not saying, "Oh, um, I agree with this preacher when he says this." It's this is my personal feeling. He takes it and makes it seem as if it's his own revelation. And this is going to be very important going forward because we are going to see the process through which he makes or processes these sermons, and you're gonna get shocked. This is the a sermon prep routine of an actual preacher. When I begin to think about the, let's just be really practical. Who gonna rob God? No, I just like God's here, you're here. Think practically, could anybody actually like give Lord, give it to me? Like right now, Neil. I ain't playing with you. I withhold my worship. Like, like what? Like it cannot be that will a man rob God of money? What is the only way you can rob somebody who is in authority? You don't rob God of money. You rob God of the opportunity to bless you. Wow. How can a man rob God? Not doing things his way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Can you, do you realize how self-centered this opinion is? Just, I just had to say this. Rob God of the opportunity to bless you. God told you, give and you did not give. That's a clear violation of a commandment. Of course you're robbing God. It's not that you went to his safe in his throne room in heaven and then stole from him. You just didn't obey his commandment. That's how you robbed him. You don't pay taxes to the government. You're robbing the government because you didn't pay taxes. Wow. These are very simple things to explain. You can use the same analogy with the government. You don't expect you to stand before the government and well, that entity. Maybe, maybe this one also makes a little bit of sense. And he cannot reward you the way he wants to reward you. It takes faith to give the first 10%. It also states that we put God first. It's the principle of first that I preached to you many times. The firstborn represents this. The first fruits represent this. Jesus is God's firstborn and he's God's first fruit. And so Jesus is God's tithe. He gave Jesus before we repented. He gave Jesus hoping that we would then come to him and let him bless us. So this is what the tithe is. He wants you to see that you can never outgive him. Can I say something to you that you maybe never thought of? Jesus was God's tithe. He sent his only and his first son on a maybe so that he could get an entire family of people to believe. It doesn't take faith to, sur to, to sow something after you already know you got it. I hope you're starting to see the pattern and I could do if you don't see what's wrong with that message, then I let me let me explain it, alright? So they're saying since Jesus was given as a the ultimate sacrifice, um, with God not knowing whether people would come, as he said, he gave Christ as a maybe. Basically, you're being encouraged to tithe on what you do not have in hopes that God will bless you. This is manipulation at its wow. first of all. God did not give his only son, not knowing how he would respond. God is, is omniscient. He not only knows how he will respond, but all the possibilities therein. By that I mean he not only knows that this one will say yes and this one will say no he knows all realities where this one will say yes where this one will say no where this one where, where all possibilities are possible and jesus christ was crucified before the foundations of the earth were laid as a mitigation to all these possibilities christ was never given on a maybe the fact that christ was crucified before the foundations of the earth were laid is a testament to god's omniscience not the opposite but then they are using it and twisting this scripture so that they can get you to give tithe or not you've not received yet like not just the tithe, just give it. <sighs> then he'll come back and say he's not preaching a certain type of gospel, which it's really hard to defend against at this point. See the pattern, and I could do this for numerous sermons. When, especially when it comes to the issue of tithing, I don't want to um, keep repeating myself. With numerous clips I found of Mike Todd literally hijacking Robert Morris again, large sections, not just you know reading the same verses, which that's clearly done, but I mean literally phraseology that's only could only contribute to Robert Morris. But I think this gets to an issue at hand with Mike Todd, and that is his study habits not only has he admitted to hating the study of the bible we'll get that in a second but he has actually admitted how he starts off his sermon prep is watching other people that's how he gets inspiration literally telling us the cheat codes of how he gets his sermons a couple things i've started doing yes this is this this is actually from a recent where was it from where, this was from unfiltered with rich uh wilkerson jr this was like two months ago this is the same someone i was alluding to earlier on. wait till you hear what he has to say about how he preps his someone it's actually outrageous and in addition to this as uh keda bukeya said it's it's really appalling that a preacher of this magnitude not that magnitude matters has such poor study habits listen to how he does his someone prep the couple of things i've started doing practically yeah. is i don't prepare my messages alone anymore tell me about it oh bro it's the most freeing thing that's ever happened to me so so i'll tell you sunday i preach Monday, Sabbath, I don't do nothing. Yeah. I go get a massage, my work there. Um, Tuesday, I'm back in the office. I'm CEO like, I'm um, finances, meetings, this, that, and the third. Wednesday, I shut everything down. Okay. So, Wednesday, first half of the day, I'm just gathering content. I'm watching everybody because I get inspired by people who do what I do. And I think this is a lost art in preaching because everybody uh, uh, warns against it because they don't want people to start sounding like people. But it's like, Basketball players play with basketball players. Like, wh like, it where, it, where in the world do you like? You only shoot by yourself, and you only defend yourself. Like, it's a good take. You're weak. Like, it's a good like, take. So I heard that. 
I listen to everybody. It, it, it's not a, a set group of people, yeah, yeah. but like I'm watching and yeah, see what's going, what's what's happening. I, I, because it shot it inspires you. It inspires me, and it it speaks to me. So first half of the day, I'm just I'm just gathering yeah. ideas, ideas, and content, and I'm all inspired. Second half of the day, I call my guys in, and I'm like, yo. This is what I feel like God said to me. Is that a rotating group? Same group? Mostly same group. Cool. And when he says he starts from Wednesday all the way till Sunday, we've seen that he li he spends half of Wednesday listening to other people and then he has a team so that they can discuss of, uh, as to how the preaching should go. He has not spent any time in a personal study, an intimate time with God so that he can speak to you. And mind you, this is your shepherd. This is your pastor. Would you allow such a person to pastor you this way? And the sad part about this, this is not just a current thing. These are started from way before. There's a video called Making of a Minister that is an unbiased documentary on Mike Todd's life. I'll put the video also in the description. It's a great video. You should go and watch it. And it shows how Mike Todd progressed. And in every stage, you can not only see the inexperience, but how he does not study the word. He's given a youth group of around 200 people. He tells them Bible stories that he remembers from his Sunday school days. And I had never studied, I had never preached a message, I would never been in front of anybody. We just, I would go in there and I would be myself. I would use Bible stories that I learned it from like McGee and me and like, <laughs> I am not, I am straight. Like, expectations. Yes, bro, like the Odyssey, like oh, I was like, I, like, I was just using things that's that- That's raised us, man. That, yeah, I was using things that were stuck in my heart. Yeah. He's given a larger group, still isn't studying and still isn't studying. Now, Mike says that even at that point, he still wasn't studying to teach. He was just telling stories and altogether not taking it very seriously. He was going to the youth group every night, doing what he'd always done before. And this goes on for over a year until the group grows to 250 students coming to SoFly. Up until he's a pastor where he openly admits that he hates studying the Bible. I do tons of stuff I don't like doing because of the vision that God's given me. Can I be hot with y'all, humble, open, and transparent? I don't like studying to preach every Sunday. It is tedious work for me. I start on Wednesday to get to Sunday, and I'm working on Thursday and on Friday and on Saturday, and I'm tweaking up until 30 minutes before service on Sunday. Every week. Now, there's a difference between getting tired studying the Bible when you're doing someone prep and hating studying the Bible. You should be very concerned when your preacher stands in the pulpit and says he hates studying the Bible. And whatever he's talking about is the, st the same Wednesday to Sunday schedule, which, as you've seen in the earlier podcast, doesn't really involve a lot of Bible study. I made a video uh, a few months ago that spoke about a few aspects of Mike Todd that you should be concerned about. It was his summer theatrics, his Mr. Graham shenanigans, and his theology. And it's so sad to see that this has stemmed from way before and because someone hasn't treated himself in the word because when you listen to uh, another podcast he has with, uh, with a friend of his i've forgotten his name he says how god spoke to him when he was doing laying with fire if god spoke to you and gave you a message that brought you to the spotlight why don't you sustain the same practice as a preacher in the last video I made about Mike Todd, we saw how he compensated for the gaps in his sermons with theatrics. And now we're seeing how he's overcompensating with plagiarizing large portions of his sermons. And I hope you're seeing that decline. A decline that is honestly as a result of spending less and less and less time with God. And I get it, the church grows busier and stuff like that. But if you have time to spend half a day listening to other people and then calling other people to help you um, package what you think God has told you by listening to other people rather than listening to his word. I don't think it's a matter of time or being busy. I think it's a matter of priority. Your priority is not in hearing from God or being in a secret place. And trust me, if your preacher is not in the secret place, you as a congregant, if you're listening to such a person, will never be a Christian who dwells in the secret place. If your shepherd is not in the practice of hearing from God and spending time alone with God for something as basic, not even for his personal devotion, but for something as critical as shepherding other the flock and teaching uh, for the purposes of correcting, building, and all those things we are told in 2 Timothy and Ephesians 4.13, then you, as a person who is under that person, will never grow in certain dimensions of the spirit. Otherwise, if this video has helped you, kindly remember to like and share the video and subscribe um, if you haven't. My name is Rekin Mwanda and this is Rekin Christian. I definitely hope to see you on the next one.
Cortes.